Ryan, thank you. Well, we are your local election headquarters, and to finish up our special election edition of Good Day, we are joined by State Representative Brooks Landgraf. First of all, congratulations. You are officially reelected. Well, thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate that. Well, and thank you for being with us this morning. And we were originally going to be talking about really Second Amendment rights mm -hmm. and, and potentially with the toss-up of this election, uh, potentially being uh, having a Democrat in office, but with a Republican in office, how are people feeling about their Second Amendment and their right to bear arms? Well, you know, I think uh, Texans and, and Americans now can feel a little bit safer uh, about their Second Amendment rights. Uh, having a Republican in the White House, a Republican Congress, I think it's going to reflect uh, the situation that we've seen in Texas for a while with the Republican governor, a Republican state legislature. And what that's meant for Texans is that our Second Amendment rights have been not only protected, but our rights under the Second Amendment have been expanded in recent years. So uh, I think that we'll be able to see uh, some of that progress as far as our constitutional rights are concerned on a federal level, and I'm very happy about that. Excellent. Now, I know that you're backed by the NRA and the, uh, and the national, um, I'm going to say it wrong, pardon, the Texas State Rifle Association. Right. How important was this for those groups to have a Republican in, in office? Well, I think it was very important. Obviously, uh, President-elect Trump received the endorsement of the National Rifle Association uh, and he certainly had uh, you know, a, a, a good history during the campaign of, of making sure that those interests and those rights uh, were, were being brought up and being protected. So I think it's certainly a, a win for everybody who uh, like myself, is very supportive of our Second Amendment rights. Certainly, and as we're looking forward to January when you're heading back to Austin, uh, how will this election possibly affect that time there? Well, you know, kind of like I mentioned earlier, now that, that uh, it, on the federal level we'll see a Republican president uh, working with a Republican Congress, I think we have a great blueprint right here in the Lone Star State for how to get things done, how to uh, uh, provide for economic expansion while protecting our rights and, and building up our infrastructure. So I think, uh, you know, if our friends in Washington uh, will be able to look to see what we've done in Texas, I think that could mean uh, great things for job creation, great things for economic expansion, and uh, an overall protection of uh, rights under the Constitution. So uh, I hope that they look to Texas for our example. Certainly, and, and speaking of protection, really quickly, border control and immigration, are those going to be things that are top of the list come January? Well, you know, uh, during the last legislative session in 2015, uh, Texas, in large part to uh, uh, failures by the federal government to, to protect and secure our border, uh, Texas, we actually had to spend close to $1 billion, uh, about $900 million, to beef up border security through the Texas Department of Public Safety. Uh, obviously, President-elect Trump has made uh, border security uh, an issue during his campaign. and if he